Yo, what is going on everybody? This is Beanie and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be going over the top 10 first basemen in MLB The Show and I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to be mad at me at this video. A lot of people are going to disagree with this video because it was a very difficult list to put together because... I, I didn't realize this, but first base is a position that is plagued by bad swing animations. I mean, I like more than half the guys that I put in the top 10 all have a one-handed long swing, which is the worst swing to have in the game. So I had to kind of factor that in pretty heavily when uh, when putting this list together because if they have that, they're, they're not going to play as good as their attributes say they will. So uh, going like before I did this list, I kind of had the, the idea in my head that it was often a better idea to uh, to just take an outfielder and put them at first base and uh, and not even like waste your stubs on buying a first baseman. And after putting the list together, it kind of confirms that for me because there are a lot of first basemen in this game who are not as valuable as maybe they cost or maybe their attributes uh, say that they are. But with that being said, um, let's go ahead and get into the video and, uh, and see where everybody falls on the list. Okay, remember we're only dealing with primary position first uh, first baseman in this list, so uh, so just keep that in mind as I go. But first, let's start out with a few honorable mentions. The first honorable mention is the 94 overall Victor Martinez. A lot of people were asking me where he would place on my uh, top 10 catcher list if he were eligible, and I would say probably right behind Posada. Um, I, I you know I think that this card could be really really effective for you as a catcher, but not as a first baseman. He doesn't have the best swing in the world. He has an auto shift that plays on him, but he is a switch hitter that hits lefties really really well and hits righties pretty damn good too. And he's always going to have a big PCI. But uh, as a first baseman, I just really couldn't find a spot for him. Um, he he is really really slow. That's what it, it, it you know if he had like 65 speed, I could probably find a spot for him on this list but he's just he's so slow that anytime you hit a ball into the gap oftentimes what should be a double or a triple is just a single so uh so that's kind of an issue with this card plus the auto shift plus a lot of compounding factors that kept him off the top 10. The last honorable mention is the 97 overall Orlando Cepeda. Um, th this was a tough guy to leave off, but I ended up leaving him off because of a couple factors. One, he, he doesn't have a great swing. Two, his batting stance is actually kind of distracting for a lot of people. It's very closed, and a lot of people don't like hitting with it, and I can understand why. But, uh, you know, he does have some things going for him. The fact that he can play outfield, the fact that, you know, he's faster than, than a lot of of, uh, other first baseman and he just has great hitting stats 81 95 97 99 I mean that's a that's almost as good as it gets but like I said he doesn't have a great swing so a lot of those attributes are going to play down for him so uh, it was really tough to leave this guy off the list he would probably be 11th and a lot of you guys may kind of question why I put other guys ahead of him on this list and it's just basically for a variety of reasons like you know they're left-handed or they maybe have a marginally better swing or they play better defense or some some stupid shit like that but uh but anyways yeah that's the last honorable mention 97 overall Orlando Cepeda let's get into the top 10 at number 10 I put the 95 overall Adrian Gonzalez and it you know it kind of come down for between him and Orlando Cepeda for the last spot but I went with Adrian because he's left-handed and he plays much better defense. Even though I don't put a lot of stock in first base defense, um, it is a very, very small factor, and it just gave Adrian the edge over that Cepeda. Um, and this guy does, I mean, he's a, he's a very, very solid hitter, 98, 96 versus righties and 96, 45 versus lefties. You're always going to have a bigger PCI, but, uh, you know, you just may not be able to tap into the power versus left-handed pitching. One bad thing about this Adrian Gonzalez though, is he also has that one-handed long swing, which is terrible, but it doesn't play as bad for lefties as it does for righties. So with him and, uh, Cepeda both kind of in that, in the bad swing camp um, I decided to go with a lefty just because I thought it wouldn't hurt you quite as bad coming from the left side so yeah 95 Adrian Gonzalez at number 10 
At number nine, this is another guy that kind of got in over the Cepeda because of uh, speed and de or not speed because him and Cepeda have basically the same amount of speed, but because of defense, he just plays a little bit better defense, but kind of like that Cepeda, he also has that one-handed long swing, which is awful. I actually don't know if Cepeda has a, a, that specific swing. I just know that whatever his swing is, it's not very good and it doesn't play that well. But uh, the 97 Goldschmidt also has that really bad swing that kind of keeps him from moving up higher on this list. And it plays really bad for him because he's a righty. So, I mean, you could almost knock 10 points off of ev every attribute that he has, or at least his power attributes, um, because he's going to generate a lot of top spin on that ball. But, you know, a, a few good things. He does play good defense, and he is pretty fast for a, for a first baseman. So that's pretty nice. He's not a terrible card to have at first base, but... But, I, you know, I would look elsewhere if you have the means to get someone else. At number eight, I went with the 99 overall Eddie Murray. And a lot of people are going to question me putting Murray at number eight over the next guy coming up. And it all boiled down to swing. Um, Eddie Murray also has that one-handed long swing. But... It is mitigated a bit by the fact that he's a switch hitter, but it's still not a good thing at all. Um, but the switch hitter thing definitely gives him the edge over the guys behind him, along with the fact that he also plays good defense. So um, he definitely hits righties much better than he hits lefties, but he's very competent against lefties, and he's always going to have a, you know, a fairly big PCI relative to a lot of other guys. Um, but it's just that swing, man, that the, the, the swing kept a lot of these guys down. And I know I keep harping on it, but it really is just kind of a, kind of, I mean, it's like poison to a lot of these players. It just makes them really, really not so great. And uh, this guy is no different, even though he's a switch hitter, even though if he had a normal swing, this would definitely be my first baseman probably all year. Um, the, it, the swing just kind of keeps him from that. So, uh, so yeah, 99 Eddie Murray at number eight. And at number seven, we have the 94 overall Cody Bellinger. And um, this one is probably going to be the most controversial ranking because a lot of people will say I have this guy way too high. Maybe he shouldn't even be on the list. And a lot of people will say I have this guy way too low. This guy has a goat swing. I, it's going to be a pretty controversial placing. But I, but I put him at number seven basically all on the back of his amazing swing. He is one of the only high level first baseman that has like a, a great swing he I, he has I think he has the two-handed compact swing which just plays so good in this game it is amazing it um generates a ton of pop but the thing that kept him so far down on this list was the fact that you're going to be playing with a much smaller PCI than a lot of these other guys. He has lower contact than the other guys on this list. He has way lower vision, um, but he does have some things over them too. He's pretty quick for a first baseman. Um, his defense, you know, isn't terrible. Like it's okay. And, uh, he just has a ton of power and that swing is going to generate even more than his attributes show. So he's going to be playing basically maxed out with power. So if you're good with PCI placement, this is probably the guy that I would go with if you don't really mind a tiny PCI. So yeah, the 94 Cody Bellinger at number seven. Um, and I, and I definitely could see an argument that he could be higher and maybe even an argument that he could be lower, but I really think that this is probably, for me, for me, for the type of player I am, this is probably the right spot for him. At number six, we have the 97 overall Willie Stargell. And like I said, I could definitely see an argument that Bellinger deserves to be higher because the Stargell does have the one-handed long swing like a lot of other first basemen. But this guy's attributes are just so much better than uh, than the Bellingers. He has like plus 30 to his vision. He has like plus 30 to his contact versus righties. I mean, he's just as far as how big your PCI is going to be and how much margin of error you have with this guy, it's just so much bigger than the Bellinger, but he is really slow. He isn't going to be able to stretch out a lot of extra base hits. Um, and that's a problem whenever you have that one handed long swing. But like I said, it is mitigated to a certain extent by the fact that he is a lefty. So uh, I'm not going to penalize him too hard for that, but I am going to penalize him a little bit, and that was enough to put him at number six on this list. 
Moving into the top five, we have the 98 overall Jason Giambi. And this guy is finally, we have someone who it has just a normal swing. He has the one-handed normal swing. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to really help you a ton. It's just, it's just a good, solid swing that's going to kind of play with his attributes. And uh, that was enough for me to stick him on the top five. That plus the fact that he is just a mammoth against right-handed pitching. I mean, if you throw a righty against this guy, your PCI is going to be huge. And if you can even just come close to getting it to it, you're going to generate a ton of pop and you can hit the ball out really easily and this guy he started he's been in the game basically all year as a battle royale reward i believe and uh if you in in at this point he's really not all that expensive so if you are looking for a first base option this is a guy that i would definitely consider even though he really doesn't have uh all that much speed defensively he's not all that great he's still man he's just offensively he's just going to be a monster for you uh as far as you know hitting home runs and stuff like that uh i really like this card i think that this is kind of an overlooked card sometimes um and yeah i would throw him in the upper echelon of first baseman for sure and that gets him a spot in the top five at number four is the 99 overall albert pujols one of the biggest bummer uh bummers of a card all year you can only acquire him by trading in pepe alazar which is just miserable um, his attributes look like the best first baseman in the game. The problem is, is that there are a few other guys that have attributes just as good as this, um, but they have a better swing. This guy has the worst swing in the game as a right-handed hitter, and he's just going to generate a ton of top spin. Um, he plays good defense. He has like some speed for a first baseman. He's not going to kill you on the base pass. So, I mean, this guy should be a GOAT. But the fact is, is the one-handed long swing really keeps him from that. It's going to make his attributes play way down, um, especially as a right-handed hitter. So, because of that, I just could not justify putting this guy in the top three o over the guys that I do have in the top three. So, uh, so, yeah, the Albert Pujols comes in at number four. At number three is the sneaky pick of all sneaky picks. It, it's the live series uh, Joey Votto. And I picked the live series Joey Votto over... The, uh, the flashback Joey Votto because, because of a, probably three things. One, this card hits lefties better. Two, this card has better vision. And three, this card has quirks. And he has a lot of quirks. Uh, active quirks, not passive quirks that don't really mean a thing at all. This guy has night player, unfazed, dead red, breaking ball hitter, rally monkey, and situational hitter. That's going to be a huge benefit to you. Um, you know, if you're somebody that like really likes to play into stuff like that, I would always play at night. I would always, uh, you know, kind of be patient with him. Uh, you know, wait till you get two strikes. It's really going to be a benefit. Uh, really sit on those fastballs or but actually, no, you can hit fastballs and breaking balls just fine. So, uh, so he shouldn't have a problem with that. And, uh, if you're, if you're behind in the game or if you need a clutch hit or something like that, he's always going to come through for you. So because of that, he just definitely gets the nod over the, the flashback Joey Votto, even though the flashback Votto has better attributes versus righties. I really think that the live series is a superior player and this card has a good swing too. He has the two handed long swing, which is not going to hurt you at all. Um, it's nothing like the one-handed long swing. So, uh, so yeah, the 96 overall Joey Votto gets a spot in the top three, surprisingly. It, it surprised me when I put him in the top three when I made this list. At number two is um, somebody that I really kind of questioned myself with because I don't know if this guy is worthy of number two in the game but uh, or the second best first baseman in the game. But it basically all came down to swing. This was one of the few guys that didn't have a one-handed long swing as far as flashbacks go and uh he has a two-handed long swing which is you know fine it's gonna play to his attributes and he is just versus righties he's maybe the best hitting first baseman in the game um he's gonna absolutely murder righties and against lefties he's fine and the 91 vision is really gonna help that uh that 79 contact versus lefties and really let you tap in to that 87 power 
And, uh, you know, the swing isn't going to hurt you. He isn't that fast. He is going to kind of be a liability on the base paths, and he's not going to play very good defense for you. But that's okay. This guy is a, is a home run hitter. He's McCovey Cove's namesake. So, and for good reason. This guy is going to hit a ton of tanks out to right field for you. So, uh, so yeah, I, I man, I just don't know. Like I said, dude, this was a, an extremely tough uh, list to put together because there were just so many factors that went into it and uh, probably going to be the toughest list that I put together all year. But, uh, but yeah, 99 Willie McCovey at, uh, at number two, and that, may, that means that number one is going to be... It's got to be the 99 Bagwell, right? I, I, I'm not crazy in thinking that it has to be this card, right? I... I I was kind of kind of wavering on this a little bit because he's right-handed and typically I like my first baseman to be left-handed, but um it's fine, you know, it, you lose an opportunity to sneak a left-handed bat into your lineup, but what you gain is just so tremendous. He has a two-handed long swing coming from a very good batting stance that tends to generate a lot of power. And um, his attributes, man, like, does he even need to generate all that much more power? 97, 97, 99, 99 with 82 vision. You're going to be dealing with a big PCI. One downside to it is that he does kind of have a crouched uh, stance. So um, he may kind of play like a, like a shorter player, even though he's not. But, you know, I think you can get past that, uh, especially when you factor in that you're getting very solid defense and very good speed to go along with just an absolute monster on offense. Um, another downside to this card is that he's super expensive. Um, I don't know if he's worth going out and buying. Um Maybe if you earned him through Battle Royale, it would be fine. But uh, just going out and buying him in a vacuum, I'm not sure that that's always going to be the best idea. But he is just, he is the goat at first base. I, I I'm I feel more and more confident the more I look at this card that he is the best option in the game at first base at the moment, and uh, he's probably going to stay that way. I can't really think of them coming out with a card that could be better than this, um, unless it was just you know some some crazy shit. But uh, but yes, yeah. so the 99 overall Jeff Bagwell takes the spot for the best first baseman in the game. And that is going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, and yeah, I'm going to be streaming tonight whenever they come out, whenever they reveal who the cover athlete is going to be for MLB The Show 18. I'm super freaking hyped about that. I'm super hyped about, you know, just... Just the, the anticipation season of MLB The Show 18 because we're going to be getting hype for like new trailers. We're going to be speculating on what kind of legends we could see in the game. All kinds of fun stuff. Um, but until then, guys, until I stream tonight at 6, I will see you guys later. Peace!